Okay. So what I'd like to do is do this work in in a completely different folder than any of your week folders. So could you create a new folder called um, redirect, maybe redirect demo? Oh, wait, sorry, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Okay. And um, yeah, go ahead and, and change into it. Okay. And what's really nice is um, sometimes I've seen it where the file explorer on your left hand pane doesn't show, show new folders right away, but yours did. So can you go ahead and just um, touch two files? One is src1.txt and the other is src2.txt for source, src, not srs. Oh, sorry, my bad. No, no problem. Okay, and then um, I'm gonna type something into them, but can you can you take that little gray bar that's between your shell pane and your editor pane and just move it to the left just a little bit? Yeah, give yourself a little more there. Good, that's good. Okay. Okay, and then um, if you go over to your redirect demo folder um, and open up those two files, I'm just gonna, Uh, oh, I just did it to myself. Okay, so source one is a is a good a good file in the sense that it ends with a new line. Um, so if you just yeah, okay, so you can see how it it almost looks like there are four lines, but the fact is what happens is line three ends in a new line um, symbol. And in the case of Linux, that's just the, the backslash N. If it was a Windows machine, it would be a backslash R backslash N. You can't okay. see that, but in either case, you need a new line at the end of the last line in a file if you're gonna read that in, okay? And if I go to source2.txt and I do something that's distinguishable, but Yeah. Okay. So in source two dot text, I've got I've got kind of what looks like four lines because there are some characters on line four. But from a technical perspective, that doesn't qualify as a line for input. Okay, if you're reading a file because it isn't terminated. So a line by definition has some characters and then that terminating new line. Okay. okay. So what I'd like you to do is over in your shell, um, if you remember the cat command, you can cat and list out source1.txt. Okay. And in if I have anything that's that you don't understand, don't just fake it, just ask me because that'll be good for, for the recording. So, you know, if I'm going too fast or um, whatever, just let me know. Now do the same thing for source2.txt. Okay. Okay. And see the difference where the three nicely terminates and then the prompt, I guess you'd call that blue line, starts on a new line. But when you when you type out the contents of source two, because there's not a new line after the DDD, you get that funny effect where your prompt looks like it's on the same line as the data output is on the same line. Okay. So um, now what I'd like you to do is, um, and boy, that just bothers me. Can you hit enter? I just, that makes me itch to have that those two lines are like that. <laughs> Sorry, that's that's just a personal failing. Okay. Good. So that was one thing 
I wanted to emphasize was that when you have a data file, and particularly when you've copied it from some other source, it's really the responsibility of the programmer to make sure that the last line in that data file is well terminated. And so just to demo that one other way, um, what's the command for counting? It's like WC dash L and then the name of the file. So word count dash L for lines and then the name of the file. I think that's right. Yeah, I, I think so. If not, I'll just look. Okay. Go back. Oh, wait. Do you want to do this with source one or source two or both? Let's do one first and then two. Okay. Okay, so as we expected, source one had three lines. And you'd think, looking at it, that source two would have four. But I don't think, and I could be wrong about this, that it does. Yeah. Yes, it only has okay. three. Because by definition, that last set of characters does not form a line in the Linux world. Um, okay. Now, the main thing I want to talk about was the redirect operator. Okay, and the redirect operator is simply the greater than sign. Okay, okay. so if you, um, and, and the redirect command is generally what you do is, and often people will say they're piping, but there is a pipe symbol that's more technically correct for piping. So what I'd like you to do with the cat command is cat source one dot text, but redirect it to a file called destin, dest.txt for te destination. So you just type the cat command like you did the first time up above, but before you hit enter, you do the greater than symbol. Like this? Or... Yeah, that okay. Okay. And then you do dest, D E S T dot text. Okay. And that will redirect it into dust? Yeah. And so that copies the contents of source one. Well, the redirect copies whatever would come out on the command line into a file name. Okay. Okay. We've been using it in our bash code to, for example, if you've read a line out of a file and you've selected it based on some criteria, you, you redirect it to your output file. Okay, now do exactly that same, keep dest.txt open, do exactly that same thing with source2.txt. And probably only the first three lines will go over. Um, now, that's a real good question. I think so, um, but that's more of a guess on my part. Oh. Okay, so no, all of the characters went over. So even though when we're doing w WC for counting lines, we're only counting three, cat pushes into the other file exactly what you saw on the on the command line up above. So it's okay. all of those characters, including the DDD. But it doesn't solve the problem. It didn't put an extra line feed at, after the DDD. Okay. Right. So what's not obvious is when you use that version of the redirect operator, it is destructive. So you that version of the redirect operator erases anything that was in the file before. Ooh. And puts what was and and just starts new with the contents of the file that you're redir of the output you're redirecting into it. Okay, the version in the in the code um, that we that was in the code reading exercise used two versions of that operator. The second one had two greater than signs. So if you you if you go ahead and you do cat source one dot text, but you use two greater than signs to redirect into desk dot text. And this one 
likely won't be destructive is what I'm guessing. It's not destructive. Okay, so the contents of source one goes into desk.txt, but we have the problem because line four wasn't well, well formed, the first line of source one gets glued onto line four. Okay, so if you do that, the opposite, let's go ahead and cat source one with a destructive redirect into desk.txt. Okay, starts over, you got a nice well-formed one, two, three. Now put one, now do an add, addendum, an additive as opposed to a destructive pipe with the two. Okay, and so that's the difference. And now let me see if I can find a piece of code to put in there. Um, yeah, let me grab this and I think I have your, yeah, so we're going to, in here, I'm going to create a new file called, um, Can you open fileio.sh? Okay. This is in my solution to the week 10 code. And okay. it includes it includes a little chunk of code that was in the file reading exercise for bash. And it's pretty clear to me people didn't understand this part. So Let's just isolate this if clause. Okay. So in general, what we're doing in this file is we're reading reading one line at a time from log file. Yes. We use an if statement to decide whether that line contains the word printer or not. And, and then if it does, we always want to write that line to the out file. Okay. The issue is we want to make sure that we can run this code over and over again without getting multiple copies of, of our selected lines in the out file. And so between 12 and 17, we have an if statement. And essentially, it, it's, it's trivial, OK? What it's doing, it says, if the count of lines out is 0, then on line 14, I'm going to do a destructive write to out file. And otherwise, every other time, OK, I'm going to write an additive redirect to out file. Okay, that makes sense. So then it's not just replacing the line with the next one, pretty much? Well, right. So so there, I did see, um, I think your code had in particular, but I did see some people who were only doing the, the single, and then their output file had only one line in it. Probably. Okay. Do you want me to go and look at mine or just... Um, I do want to look at yours, but I think I'll take the recording off because because um, because I think you had a couple of unique things that don't necessarily apply to everybody. So okay. some people used only the destructive right and ended up with an output file with one line in it. What most people who lost a couple three points had was that they used only the additive output. And that worked the first time you ran your script, but if you ran it again, you kept getting multiples of 493 lines. Now, if you didn't want to have this in the heart of your loop, you could have an if statement above your loop that tests to see if printer use.test exists. 
and then deletes it. And then you would just have the redirecting additive um, version. But I kind of like this because it re kind of, well, for the purposes of this course, it's intended to make people pay attention to the two different versions of that redirect symbol. Okay. Um, so that's the demo I wanted to do. I'm going to stop the recording and then we'll take a look at your code. Okay. Sounds good. Um,